a lot of races get caught out by the longer race. Some races going five, six, even seven hours, if I remember correctly. Second thing is there's going to be lots of picking the bike up and putting it down. So it's definitely going to be exerting you physically. And then third thing is skills just aren't enough. Um, you need to be able to have endurance to be able to get through these types of events. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to combat those three problems for the Grassroots uh, Australia series so you can give it a good crack um, going into the next round. So first thing that we want to tackle is the long races will catch riders off guard. So some of the races had laps where the laps were going about two hours and then due to conditions even longer. So even if there's a four hour cutoff, if it's a two hour lap and you go through, it's 10 minutes before the cutoff, that means you go through for another two hour lap. So a four, a four hour race turns into a six hour race. Um, I've seen recently that a lot of riders get caught off guard by this because they look at it and they go, okay, it's a four hour event, but really it's probably a six hour event or maybe even longer. So how do you combat this? First thing you need to do is when you go and ride, you need to be doing longer rides. So if you're going riding on the weekend with your mates and you go and ride for an hour and you're stopping every 15 minutes to have a break and check out the scenery, it's not going to be have the highest level of transfer over to a grassroots round um, because you're not going to be having as much rest. You're going to be riding a lot harder and you're going to be riding a lot longer. So all it means is when you do out get out for a ride, go out for longer rides. Go for a four, five, six hour ride to get your body accustomed to being on the bike for that long. And then also mentally being able to be on that bike for that long and be able to keep pushing with minimal amount of breaks. Second thing is you're gonna be doing lots of picking the bike up. Um, so when you go and practice, it's easy to you know have a lot of rest and recharge and have a chat to your mates. When you're racing, obviously we don't wanna be doing that. So if you're gonna be picking the bike up lots, it's gonna be taxing you a lot. The way that we make that easier is you need to get yourself as strong as you can. The stronger you can get yourself, the lighter it's gonna to be to pick up your 100 kilo plus bike. The lighter you can make that bike feel for yourself, the less energy it's going to take out of you. So if you're doing like a really snotty hill climb and it's um, and you know you're on the side of a hill and it's an awkward angle and you've got to pick 100 kilos plus of bike weight up plus trying to get your body weight up the hill, if you can get yourself stronger, it's going to make that feel a lot lighter. If we can get it to feel a lot lighter, you're going to use a lot less energy. If you use a lot less energy, then when you finally get to the top of the hill, you're going to be able to recharge much quicker because you haven't taxed yourself as much. So how do you get yourself stronger? First thing that we need to do um, that I would recommend investing in or getting would be um, a squat rack, a bar and a squat rack and also some bumper plates as well. Um, so the reason that that's so important to have these is because this is the best way to build strength. There's no amount of push-ups or body weight squats that we can do that's going to allow us to develop the strength to make throwing around 100 kilos easy. So what's some stuff that you can do? So upper body um, exercise that you can use. One of my favorites is the bent over row. Start at the top of the knee, back nice and straight, pulling into the um, into your belly button, okay? And you can start off with, say, four sets of 10 if you're new to this type of training. The other thing that you can use um, for your lower body is you can do um, movements like a back squat. So um, quite simple, hips back, bend with the knees, okay? Hips back bend with the knees. And this is just gonna get you really, really good at being able to get strong. The, the great thing about using weight training is that we can load up the weights and we can monitor the load, right? We can get you stronger and we can actually see that we're making progress by putting a little bit more weight on the bar each week and tracking how much we're lifting and then also how many reps we're able to get out as well. Third thing is skills aren't gonna be enough, okay? You're gonna need endurance. Um, reason I say this, is because you can going out in practice and nailing all the sections is one thing. Being able to nail those same sections and same um, obstacles once you've done five or six hours of, of riding is completely different. So sometimes, like a, a, a lot of the time, I'll see riders that are actually quite good and have a good ability and good skill, but they don't display those same skills. Okay, they might be a gold rider, but they look like a silver rider after five hours of riding. They might be a silver rider, but they look like a bronze rider after five hours of riding. They might be a top level bronze rider, but they look like a bottom level bronze rider after five hours of riding. So skills is part of the equation. Obviously you need that, but you need to have the endurance. Um, so how do you have the endurance? Goes back to part one, making sure you're doing longer rides. And then number two is also, it comes back to the strength work. Okay, that will help to give you the endurance. The riders that aren't strong enough, okay, the riders that need to be a lot stronger aren't doing um, enough strength training or bike time or weight training to get their strength up. What happens is in those opening hours, they might be fast, 
but they're exerting a lot more energy than what they should be. Okay. Instead of getting to the halfway point of the race and having, and only being at, you know, 80% of their, sorry, 20% of their fuel tank being used and having 80% left, they might be at 50%. Okay. They're chewing through a lot more energy. So they've hit the wall a lot earlier. Their, their level of endurance drops off like this rather than dropping off like that. So again, the stronger you can get yourself and the lighter you can get the bike to feel, the less energy you'll use when you're muscling it around. And if you're using less energy when you muscle it around, you're going to have more energy there in the tank to be able to ride harder for a longer period of time um, and also be able to put the bike where you want it to go. If you'd like some help with this stuff, um, going into your next grassroots series or grassroots round, you can apply for my Fast Laps program below where we map out all the fitness and nutrition for our guys. Um, otherwise, hopefully you enjoyed this video.